Hey Megan Scully and this is the Limerick Post Show and joining me now it is artist Gavin Hogg. How are you getting on? Very good, thank you. And of course the reason we're talking is because of the virtual exhibition that's taking place in the Hunt Museum until the end of February. New small work with Harper Hogg and Shinners and we have had Charles on the show and I'm delighted to have you as well. Very good, delighted to be here. Talk to us about your work in the exhibition. Uh, my work in the exhibition is nine paintings of uh, 60 cm by 45. Uh, there's a series of work that I completed towards the end of 2019. Um, uh, and they're all different. Um, what I'm always looking for within the work is to create unique images, which may or may not be related to each other, but which aren't uh, a kind of riff on the same idea or uh, closely connected. So each work is an individual piece. And what I loved as well, what it said in the description was that it's contemporary art, but it's also timeless pieces. And I think it's important to let people know that the work is for sale as well. So you can get yourself your own piece of timeless art for your own home as well, which I think is very special. Yes, without a doubt, like that's where all the uh, every artist wants their work to eventually go is into somebody's home or possibly a museum. But certainly I think particularly it's special, uh, particularly special when it goes into somebody's home, um, that it becomes part of their own environment. And it's something that they see on a daily basis, uh, perhaps not every day, but it will they, they'll see different things at different times so they can start a very unique uh, conversation or develop a very unique relationship with the individual pieces and then when they have more than one piece when they have several pieces there's a whole kind of communication level going on there as well which I think um, for the imagination is very important um, you know we talk a lot about mental health these days and one of the things which I think maybe we neglect is actually the quality of our imaginative space uh, where we need space to kind of room to roam, um, where we can hack, indulge things which we don't have to take seriously, where we have, uh, I suppose, on a very light level, there's the aesthetic, the decorative, but then there's uh, more, there's deeper levels into the unconscious and then just pure kind of imaginative space, almost like a child's imaginative space, where there's no rules, there's no limits, and uh, the viewer is free to think whatever they want to for those couple of seconds, minutes, or even hours, depending on what kind of time they have. That's one thing I've noticed, I think, in this past year is how we have gone back to being creative and we've because we have time now to be creative. I think a lot of people have gone back to drawing, sketching and um, doing things that you like you mentioned there about child. Like we were doing things that we maybe did in our childhood that we probably took for granted, whereas we are only realizing now in our adulthood how therapeutic it is and how it's an outlet for your mental health and also your creative side as well, because you're you're kind of exploring maybe what's in your mind. And um, for you, you said that collection was finished around 2019. Has your work changed much, do you think, since you know, experiencing lockdown? No, no, the, the lockdown in ways didn't make too much difference to me because I spent a lot of time uh, uh, by myself in a white room making work. Um, so if anything, it, it almost helped intensify it because all of the paperwork or any of the, the yeah, I suppose more kind of day-to-day -day busy work um, ceased to be of any real interest or relevance. So I got to focus uh, kind of 24 seven on my own work and I work very pragmatically. So I get to the studio at seven in the morning and I'm there till about 5.30, quarter to six in the evening. And I do that about six days a week. Um, and so I'm working all the time and what the lockdown really allowed me to do was even to intensify that even a bit further. Uh, and then I've also been very fortunate that I've been on a series of explorations and I suppose experiments with my own work and research which has come good over the last 12 months particularly. Now this has been going back several years um, I suppose since I had that uh, solo show in the Limerick City Gallery in 2015 and since then I've been working towards uh, what the work in the hunt is, is I suppose the one fruition of and then the work since is developing on that all the time. What I'm trying to gain is maybe no, no ultimate resolution with in the work but a facility where the work itself is an ongoing dialogue it's almost like a dance or a piece of music it just it's something you can keep on going back to and becomes quite a kind of physical um joyous engagement in between there being a lot of kind of graft and grind 
It sounds absolutely incredible. And, you know, it just shows the amount of hard work you put into your work with all those hours and in the studio. And but it's your passion as well. Um, yes. I have to ask about the about the virtual experience. Obviously, I know art really should, you know, we should really get to, to be there in real life and, and look right and stand in a gallery and really view it and, and take it in. Um, but I guess the other side of the positive side to this virtual is more eyes from further field can now see your work from all around the world and hopefully now what it will do is it'll encourage more people to come to Limerick in the future because you know we're such a creative and um, we're so rich in arts and culture and I, I hope that more people from around the world get to experience what Limerick has to offer. Yes, the, the, the Honda, I think, have done a fantastic job with the virtual gallery. Uh, it is unfortunate people can't like be physically present with the work because that's a very important element. But as you say, the positive, the upside is how accessible it now is to people all over the world who will realise uh, how strong the visual culture is in is in Ireland, uh, particularly in Limerick. Like Limerick's always had a very uh, noticeable basis of painters, particularly if you want to go kind of per capita. It's always have a, had a lot of renowned visual artists, uh, consider we say in comparison to somewhere like Dublin or even Cork. Um, uh, yeah, so it's always been very strong with individual arts without a doubt. And hopefully that the, um, that the visual, Virtual exhibition in the hunt will be just one uh, one more element to add to people's awareness of that. Absolutely. And of course, just a reminder, new small work of Harper, Hogg and Shinners is available to view online with the Hunt Museum until the end of February. Gavin Hogg, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you in the Limer Post Show, getting to know you more and uh, about your work as well. Well, thank you very much, Megan. It's delighted. I'm always, I'm always uh, embraced opportunities to talk about my own work. It's always good. Incredible. And look, we look forward to seeing you in real life and seeing your work in real life as well in the future. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Megan.